جاتنا يا وجيها يا فاطمة الزهراء يا بنت محمد يا قرة عين الرسول يا سيدتنا ومولاتنا إنا توجهنا واستشفعنا وتوسلنا بك إلى الله وقدمناك بين يدي حاجاتنا يا وجيهتان عند الله اشفئي لنا يا أبا محمد يا حسن بن علي أيها المجتبى يا ابن رسول الله يا حجة الله على خلق يا سيدنا ومولانا إنا توجهنا واستشفعنا وتوسلنا بك إلى الله وقدمناك بين يدي حاجاتنا يا آن عند الله اشفع لنا عند يا أبا عبد الله يا حسين ابن علي أيها الشهيد يا ابن رسول الله يا حجة الله على خلق يا سيدنا ومولانا إنا توجهنا واستشفعنا وتوسلنا بك إلى الله وقدمناك بين يدي حاجاتنا يا وجيهان يا أبا الحسن يا علي بن الحسين يا زين العابدين يا ابن رسول الله يا حجة الله على خلق يا سيدنا ومولانا إنا توجهنا واستشفعنا وتوسلنا بك إلى الله وقدمناك بين يدي حاجاتنا يا وجيهان يا أبا جافر يا محمد بن علي أيها الباقر يا ابن رسول الله يا حجة الله على خلق يا سيدنا ومولانا إنا توجهنا واستشفعنا وتوسلنا بك إلى الله وقدمناك بين يدي حاجاتنا يا وجيهان عند الله يا أبا عبد الله يا جافر بن محمد أيها السادق يا ابن رسول الله يا حجة الله على خلق يا سيدنا ومولانا إنا توجهنا واستشفعنا وتوسلنا بك إلى الله وقدمناك بين يدي حاجاتنا يا وجيهان عند الله يا أبا الحسن يا موسى بن جعفر أيها القاضم يا ابن رسول الله يا حجة الله على خلقه يا سيدنا ومولانا إنا توجهنا واستشفعنا وتوسلنا بك إلى الله 
وَقَدَّمْنَا كَبَيْنَ يَدَيْ حَاجَاتِنَا يَا وَجِيهًا عِنْدَ اللَّهِ يا أبا الحسن يا علي بن موسى أيها الرضا يا ابن رسول الله يا حجة الله على خلقه يا سيدنا ومولانا إنا توجهنا واستشفعنا وتوسلنا بك إلى الله وقدمنا كبين يدي حاجاتنا يا وجب اشفع لنا يا أبا جعفر يا محمد بن علي أيها التقي الجواد يا ابن رسول الله يا حجة الله على خلق يا سيدنا ومولانا إنا توجهنا واستشفعنا وتوسلنا بك إلى الله وقدمناك بين يدي حاجاتنا يا وجيهان اشفع لنا عند الله يا أبا الحسن يا علي بن محمد أيها الهادي النقي يا ابن رسول الله يا حجة الله على خلق يا سيدنا ومولانا إنا توجهنا واستشفعنا وتوسلنا بك إلى الله وقدمناك بين يدي حاجاتنا يا وجيهان اشفع يا أبا محمد يا حسن بن علي أيها الزكي العسكري يا ابن رسول الله يا حجة الله على خلق يا سيدنا ومولانا إنا توجهنا واستشفعنا وتوسلنا بك إلى الله وقدمناك بين يدي حاجاتنا يا وجيهان عند الله الحسن والخلف الحجة أيها القائم المنتظر المهدي ابن رسول الله يا حجة الله على خلق يا سيدنا ومولانا إنا توجهنا واستشفعنا وتوسلنا بك إلى الله وقدمناك بين يدي حاجاتنا يا وجيهان من الله اشفع لنا من الله يا وجيهان من الله اشفع لنا من الله يا وجيهان من الله يا سادتي وموالي إني توجهت بكم أئمتي وعدتي ليوم فقري وحاجتي إلى الله وتوسلت بكم إلى الله واستشفعت بكم إلى الله فاشفعوا لي إن الله واستنكذوني من ذنوبي إن الله فإنكم وسيلتي إلى الله وبحبكم وبقربكم 
أرجونا جات من الله فكونوا إن الله رجائي يا سادتي يا أولياء الله صلى الله عليهم أجمعين ولعن الله وأداء الله ظالميهم من الأولين والآخرين آمين رب العالمين رحم الله سورة المباركة الفاتحة ذکر غم حسین سے محفل سجی رہی گل ہو گیا چرا مگر روشنی رہی اکبر کے بعد زیست میں کیا دل کشی رہی لیلا تمام یہی سوچتی رہی خیم فرات سے تو ہٹائے گئے مگر ابا سے نام دار کی تیوڑی چڑی رہی باس لینے آئے جو میدان کی رضا زینب بس اپنے بازو کو دیکھتی رہی عشق غم حسین کا ٹوٹا نہ سلسلہ رو مال فاطمہ میں ہمیشہ نمی رہی بلوے میں بیری دا سرے زینب کو دیکھ کر اللہ جانے کیسے خیامت رکی رہی ذکر غم حسین سے سلوات اللہ محمد و علی محمد مسافروں کے مدینے میں جب رسید آئی کہ وعدہ گاہ میں فوج 
जे शहे सई दाई रसीदा तही सुख रा के घर में ई दाई तपे गुहा गया और ताकत जदीदाई मलाल दूर हुआ अश के खरीने से बुखार नब्ज से गम दिल से दूर सीने से ये कह के माधरे अब्बास को लिया हमरा मोहम्मद हनफी के घर आई दुख तरेशा वो मुंतजर थे लिए नाम शहेजी जा सलाम करते ही कहने लगे बना लवा लो अब सुनाओ इमाम गरीब का नामा पढ़ो मरीज के आगे तबीब का नामा मोहम्मद हनफी ने किया लिफाफे को निकाला शोखे पुर नूर सैयद शौदा पड़ा जो नाम में अलखाब अपना रो के कहा हुसैन तेरे करम पर मैं लाख जान फिदा लिया जो नाम जुदाई तो आंसू बहने लगे सलाम पढ़ के अलय का सलाम सलाम पढ़ के अलय का सलाम कहने लगे सलवा तला मोहम्मद वाल मोहम्मद ഹമുദിലുമാസമാവാത്തിമുഖീമുല്ല بشيرا ونذيرا وداعيا الى الله باذنه وسراجا منيرا ابي القاسم محمد اللهم صل وسلم على محمد وعلى اهل بيته ائمه الهدى ومصابيح الدجا الذين اذهب الله عنهم الرجس وطهرهم تطهيرا اما بعد فقد قال الله سبحانه وتعالى في كتابه الكريم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم واذا خاطبهم الجاهلون قالوا سلاما صلوا على محمد وعلى محمد اللهم صل على محمد وعلى محمد ما ريسبكتد ان اسلام سلام عليكم ورحمه الله Last night I said that the title of my series of lectures this Muharram is Past Prophets Modern Challenges and I explained that in this series of lectures 
I'll be looking at the stories in the Quran of prophets that came before the Prophet of Islam, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Muhammad. In order to draw inspiration from their stories and to help us deal with some of the challenges that we are facing today. Last night we looked at the story of Nabi Dawood ala Nabiina wa alayhi wa alayhi salam and the whole idea of not jumping to conclusions. And I said that actually when we look at these type of stories in the Quran, Allah himself tells us why it's so important to examine them. For in Surah Yusuf, verse number 111, he says, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, Lakad Kana fi Qasasihim Ibratun li Ulil Albab. Indeed, in their stories, in the stories of their prophets, there are Ibra, there are lessons and morals for the those who have intellect to learn from. Because the prophets were exemplars for us. They displayed in their character outstanding qualities that we should aspire to as well. And despite all of their trials and tribulations, they remained committed to the cause of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help and guide people for them to get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then we said that actually what better time for us to discuss such stories than these nights of Muharram. For indeed, Sayyidu Shuhada, Aba Abdullah Hussein, Salawatullah Salamu is of course Warithul Anbiya. He's the heir of the prophets. But what did he inherit? He didn't inherit their wealth or their money or their property. He inherited the sublime qualities of the prophets. And therefore, as we gather here on these nights to commemorate his great sacrifices, and we try to become more and more Husseini, then we should also try to implement those same qualities in our lifestyle as well. Inshallah, tonight we will look at another great prophet of the Quran, Nabi Nuh ala Nabina wa alayhi wa alayhi salam, and we will look at the whole idea of how to deal with insults, starting with the loud salawat ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. Now, as I did yesterday, and as I will, inshallah, do on all of these in all, in all of these lectures, I will begin by presenting a brief overview of the prophet in question. So, with regards to Nabi Nuh or Prophet Noah, as he's known in English, just a few important facts about him, and then we'll go on to mention this whole idea of able to deal with insults and insulting behavior in a correct way. So Nabi Nuh, he lived for 2,500 years and he was in a place where really according to our traditions, it seems that he was right there in the middle of Kufa, that's where he lived. And we are told that by trade he was a carpenter and he of course is such a great prophet that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions his story in 14 chapters of the Quran. And there's of course one whole chapter which is named after him, chapter number 71. So now Nabi Nuh, we know that he is part of this very select, elite group of prophets. Not only was he a great prophet himself, but he's one of the select five who are known as the Ulul Adam prophets. In fact, he was the first of them. Ulul Adam meaning the messengers of great resolve. Because these are the prophets who were sent by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with new legislation, with new divine laws. And therefore they had to have this exceptional resolve in order to implement this new law in the societies to which they were sent. So th he was the first of these great Ulul Azam prophets, the other four being Nabi Ibrahim, Nabi Musa, Nabi Isa, and Rasulul Akram sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But now 
let's have a look at his ma'rifah. This is something that really we can learn a lot from. With regards to his ma'rifah, we are told that it was at a very high level indeed. In fact, we get an idea of his ma'rifah in the Quran in Surah Hud, verse number 41. Now that he has built the ark, he tells his people to now board it. But look at the words he uses and how this tells us so much about his deep knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his ma'rifah. In this verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَقَالَ الرَّقَبُوا فِيهَا And he said, board this ark, go inside it. Bismillah, majraha wa mursaha. Allahu Akbar. This is what tells us about his ma'rifah. What this means is that he tells the people, board this ark in the name of Allah. It will sail and it will anchor. A very short statement, but with so much meaning. What can we learn from this? First of all, He's starting with the name of Allah. He's saying that he knows in effect that nothing can happen without the will of Allah. It is because of Allah's blessing that everything takes place. That's one. Secondly, he says that not just everything starts with Allah. So the ship, the ark will sail. It will start with Allah's blessing. But also everything finishes with Allah. It will anchor and will come to a halt by the will of Allah. You see, just this short statement of his tells us so much. He wants to make sure that he is starting this project of saving the people from that flood that drowned everyone else by remembering who is the one who is planning all of this, who is the one who is making all of this happen, and the fact that this project of his, if he starts with the name of Allah, it will be a blessed project. In fact, Mawla Amirul Mu'mineen Ali ibn Abi Talib sallallahu wa sallam alayhi wa sallam alayhi Muhammad. He gives us this advice. This is the first practical tip I would like to present to myself first and foremost and to my dear brothers and sisters tonight. And that is all about doing everything with the name of Allah. So, Mawla Amirul Mu'mineen when he is giving the tafsir of Bismillah rahmani rahim He says the following, that whenever a servant wants to start something or wants to read something, he should say Bismillah rahmani rahim And if he does so, his work will be blessed for him. Now my brothers and sisters, of course, when Nabi Nuh did this and it had such an effect, it saved his people. When Amir al Mu'mineen is giving us this advice as well, that start everything in the name of Allah, whether it's you're reading something or you're doing something, your project will become blessed for you. It doesn't mean we just simply say those words with our tongue, it doesn't mean we only articulate those words. We often have the habit, it's a fantastic habit to do that. From our childhoods, we are ingrained with this habit. But what is really meant here, the thing that really has the impact, is when we bear in mind what we are saying. That when we say, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, I start in the name of Allah, the All Beneficent, the Ever Merciful. It means that I am acknowledging who Allah is. The fact that nothing can happen without Him. The fact that everything that starts and finishes is because of His will and the fact that if it's not for His mercy, this, this project won't take place and it won't be blessed. Therefore, when we say this, let's make it a point from here onwards. Myself first and foremost, for all of these advices that I give, I try and tell myself in the first instance, that inshallah from now onwards when we say Bismillah rahman rahim let's not just do it out of a habit without any meaning. Let's really pay attention to that and then it will have that effect that the Bismillah of Nabi Nuh had 
and the recommendation that Amir al Mu'mineen was pointing to, inshallah. Sallu ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. So, this great Ulul Azam Prophet, he went throughout most of his life in such hardships. I'll give you some examples and then we'll see how it relates to the whole issue of dealing with insults and insulting behavior. Because when we look at this area, when we talk about insults, it could mean general things, but it could also mean right now in the time that we are living in about Islamophobia. This is something that is on the increase, whether it's here in America or in the UK or other parts of the world. Islamophobic insults are something that many Muslims are having to deal with all the time. And so therefore, when we talk about past prophets and modern challenges, we want to know how is the best way to deal with Islamophobic insults or even actions. Because insults incorporates both words and deeds. Also, with regards to general insults, you might not come across Islamophobia in your work, in your school, on a regular basis or ever at all. It depends where all of us are. But we have all come across and definitely we will come across insults in the future. Therefore, it is something that we must try and deal with in a proper way based on the teachings of the Quran and the Ahlul Bayt. With regards to Nabi Nuh, what happened was that he was always insulted by the pagans of his time. I'll give you some examples, then we'll see what the Quran and the Ahlul Bayt say about this and how Nabi Nuh himself dealt with it. And so we can implement these teachings in our lives as well, inshaAllah. So, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells him that he must build this ark, what he does is he plants these date palms. But the people, they start insulting him. They call him names. They call him a farmer. They say to him that this is ridiculous what you're doing. At your age, he's very old at this time when he's planting these palm trees. But he's got a plan in mind. Because these palm trees, they will provide for him the timber that will be used for that ark. So at that time, he's insulted. Then afterwards, when Allah subhanahu wa ta ta'ala gives him the message that now it's time to use the timber for the ark, he chops down these palm trees. Before they had insulted him that why at this old age are you bothering to, to plant things like palm trees? You'll never see the fruits of your labor. Now, just as the palm trees are reaching their peak and they're about to bear fruit, He's chopping them down. So now again they insult him. They say that he's a lumberjack. They say that he's gone crazy because at this stage when people are wanting to get the fruit, he's chopping these palms down. Then at a later stage when he starts building his ark, again he's insulted. They say that he's a sailor. They say that he's crazy trying to build a ship in Kufa. Kufa was very far from any sea. And so they start calling him names and they insult him like this. That what is he doing? You see my brothers and sisters, these are the insults, the type of insults that these great prophets had to deal with. Also, our own prophet, Rasulul Akram sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Allahumma sallam ala Muhammad, Look at the insults that he had to deal with. He was called a mad person. He was called a magician. He was called a sorcerer and a poet. But look at the way they dealt with these type of insults. In fact, we read this verse all the time on Fridays where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about this insulting behavior even when the Prophet was in the mihrab delivering his sermon. On Friday, when he was delivering his sermon, what happened? In Surah Jumu'ah, verse number 11, we read this. وَإِذَا رَأَوْ تَجَارَةً أَوْ لَحْوَنٍ فَضُّ إِلَيْهَا وَتَرَكُوكَ قَائِمًا What happened was, as he was dealing his sermon, there came a whole group of traders. In order to attract the people to their goods, they start banging their tambourines and their drums. When the people hear this, they get attracted, they get up, 
as the prophet is delivering his sermon and they leave him standing in order to go and get a deal. The verse tells us when they saw the deal and the diversion, they scattered from you and they left you standing. This verse was revealed because of this incident. So look at all of these incidents, all of these insults that these great prophets had to deal with. Now, let's look at the guidance we get from the Quran and the Ahlul Bayt as to how we should effectively deal with such behavior. Sallu ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. The first thing to bear in mind is that usually insults are based on ignorance. Amiru Mu'mineen Ali ibn Abi Talib sallallahu alayhi says Anasu a'da'u ma jahilu that people are enemies of what they don't know. It's usually based out of ignorance. So when we take this, let's have a look at what the Quran says. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in that verse that I recited at the beginning of this majlis talks about the response that should be given to those who are ignorant. وَإِذَا خَاتُبُهُمُ الْجَاهِلُونَ قَالُوا سَلَامًا When the Ibadur Rahman, I'll talk about Ibadur Rahman in a moment, but when the sincere, pious servants of Allah are addressed by jahilun, by ignorant people, they don't respond with ignorance. They respond with peace, with reason. Salam, when you look at the tafsir of this verse, salam here means they give a, a peaceful, reasoned response. Now, the Ibadur Rahman, who are they? This verse I recited just now is actually the first verse of a series of amazing verses known as the Ayatu Ibadur Rahman. The verse of Ibadur Rahman, those sincere, pure servants of Ar Rahman, of the all compassionate Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They are verses 63 to 76 of Surah Furqan. In this verse, in, in these verses, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala puts forward about 14 characteristics of his sincere pure servants. And inshallah, if mu'mineen have the time, it'd be something very beneficial to do to go through these 14 verses and these 14 qualities and see that which ones are we do we have? Which ones are we lacking? Even the ones we have, how can we try and improve on them? In any case, the very first one is this one. So this tells us that when we are faced with an ignorant insult, we should respond with wisdom, with peace, and with reason. This is the first step. However, we see that many times this doesn't have an in in impact, or sometimes at least. The person just keeps doing it and it doesn't have any effect. Then what? The Quran tells us this is how we must try and use the Quran as a manual for our guidance in all day-to-day -day problems. If that doesn't work, next step, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, exercise Hajar Jameel. What is Hajar Jameel? Hajar Jameel is when you keep away but in a graceful manner. So, the verse in question is, surah, is in Surah Al-Muzammil, verse number 10. وَاسْبِرْ عَلَى مَا يَقُولُونَ وَحْجُرْهُمْ حَجْرًا جَمِيلًا Allah addresses His Prophet. He says to him, that be patient over what they say. Those insults that I referred to earlier, be patient. And then, وَحْجُرْهُمْ حَجْرًا جَمِيلًا Keep away from them, but in a graceful manner, in a noble way, in a respectful way. Look at the wisdom behind this. It means that if somebody, especially if we are constantly being abused by someone, we are being insulted by someone, keep away from them, but in a respectful, honorable, and noble manner. Why? Because then we are always leaving the door open for reconciliation. The verse doesn't say, or Allah doesn't say to the Prophet, respond to them as they respond to you. Or we are not told anywhere that respond 
in such a harsh, in a rude manner, in a confrontational manner. No, keep the door open. Don't let them affect you. Why are you letting their negativity affect your spirituality? Keep away from them. But in this way, so that the door is over, always open. Perhaps in the future, they will see sense. They will come to you. But if you have responded to them in a very harsh and rude and confrontational manner, then it's going to be very difficult to bring them back and to have a good relationship with them. In fact, especially if it's against Islam and Islamophobia, it will only make the situation worse. An example of Hajar Jamil is what we do quite often. We agree to disagree. This is an example of Hajar Jamil, keeping away in a graceful manner. This is also taught to us in the Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in Surah Qasas, verse number 55, He says, وَإِذَا سَمِئُوا اللَّغْفُ وَأَعْرُضُوا عَنْ When they hear love, وَإِذَا سَمِئُوا اللَّغْفُ when, they, when the believers hear something vain, something like an insult, something which is batil and not right, it's, it's wrong, it's invalid, it's something vain, they avoid it. an. But then what did they do? وَقَالُوا لَنَا أَعْمَالُنَا وَلَكُمْ أَعْمَالُكُمْ سَلَامٌ عَلَيْكُمْ They say that for us are our deeds. For you are your deeds. Salamun alaykum. Salamun alaykum here doesn't mean that greeting. Usually we say salamun alaykum when we greet people, but Arabs, when they use it, it's for both greeting and saying farewell. Here it means goodbye. See you later. We agree to disagree. You have your actions and deeds. I have my actions and deeds. We are all responsible for what we do. Allahu Akbar. What brilliant advice from the Quran. So first was we don't respond to ignorance with ignorance. Second, if that doesn't work, rather in that first response still, we respond with peace, with salam, meaning wisdom and reason. We explain the situation that no, it's not like this. And we Muslims are not like that. We don't believe in this and so on and so forth. That's what we mean by peaceful and reasoned response. If that doesn't work, Hajar Jamil, keeping away in a graceful manner. An example of that is agreeing to disagree. But then, what is the higher level response after all of this? The higher level response, which is very difficult, of course. I'm not saying this is easy, but we'll see how Nabi Nuh did this and even the Ahlul Bayt, how they did this as well. And that is to repel evil with goodness this has truly a remarkable effect if we are able to do it sometimes people will take advantage they will take advantage and misuse or abuse your compassion your kindness but often we see that it actually works the verse in question is in surah fusilat number 34 idfa billati hiya ahsan repel evil with what is better if you do this the verse tells us that person will become like a sympathetic friend for you waliyun habim he'll become like a sympathetic friend maybe not immediately but maybe afterwards because often they will feel embarrassed that i res i said this to him i did that to him look how he responded in this beautiful manner and therefore maybe later on they will come together so these are the steps we respond with peace and wisdom and with reason we exercise Hajar Jamil we agree to disagree and if we can we even in fact when we exercise Hajar Jamil I'll just put a contemporary twist on this as well one of the things that we come across a lot is on social media People get abused, they even get bullied, they get told all sorts of insults on social media. One of the reference of Hajar Jamil in this aspect is to block that person, is to perhaps unfriend that person. So it can happen in all areas of life, not just physically one-to-one, -one, 
but also on social media and it's becoming more and more prevalent on social media. Abstain from them, keep away from them in a graceful manner. And then if you see that they are coming round, they are stopping this, you can again friend them, you can unblock them and so on and so forth. But now let's have a look at the great response of Nabi Noor. How did he respond? By repelling evil with goodness. Sallu ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. When those people were abusing him and insulting him in all those ways that I mentioned earlier, look what he does. He, first of all, he, he says, Ya qawmi. This is in Surah A'raf. Verses 60 to 62 tells us his amazing response. He says, Ya qawmi. When they were telling him, just the verse 60, they say to him that we see you are in manifest error. They're saying to Nabi Nur, this great prophet, that we see you are in manifest error. What would some people have done? They would have, it would have been very easy for him or for someone to respond by saying, no, I'm not in error. You are the one in error. How dare you say that to me? Look at his response. He says, Ya qawmi. What does this mean? It means, oh my people. Look at the tone. The tone is soft. It is gentle. It's kind. Oh my people, meaning I'm one of you. We are all one. Idfa billati hiya ahsan. Repel evil with what is better. Then what? He says to them that I'm not in error. Rather, I am a messenger of Rabbul Alameen, the Lord of the worlds. And I communicate messages from my Lord to you. I am a well-wisher for you and I know things from my Lord that you don't know. This is the response of Nabi Nuh. This is the response that we must also try and adopt. Like I said, it's very difficult. But now I'll give you an example of the effect that this can have. If we do it sincerely, if we do it in a way that these great leaders showed us, Look at the response it has. The example is a famous one. You must have come across it before. It's the example of Imam Hassan al Mushtaba, salawatullah wa salamu alayhi. How does he repel evil with good and what effect did it have? So, Mu'awiyah ibn Abi Sufyan is in Syria. He's propagating all wrong messages all hatred against the Ahlul Bayt The people there are being deceived by his propaganda. One person from Sham, from where Muawiyah was, happens to go to Medina. When he goes there, he sees there's this person with a very good appearance on, on a horse. He asks someone, who is that person there? He is told that is Hassan ibn Ali ibn Abi Talib salawatullah wa salamu alayhi. So then he feels really angry He's jealous that Imam Ali could have such a son Remember he's been brainwashed He has been subjected to all of that negative propaganda By Muawiyah in Sham So he's got this very awful opinion of the Ahlul Bayt So he goes up to Imam Hassan And he asks him Are you Hassan the son of Ali? And he says yes at that moment, he starts insulting him. He starts insulting him and his father. After he's finished, Imam Hassan alayhi salam, he says to him, Salamun alaykum. He laughs and he says to him, Are you a stranger? And he says, Yes, I am. He says that, Come with me. It seems there's been a misunderstanding. And then he says to him that, if you want something, I will give it to you. If you want directions, I will guide you. If you are in need of having your luggage and your things carried, I will carry them for you. If you are hungry, I will feed you. If you need clothes, I will clothe you. If you need something, I will meet your needs. If you have been expelled from a place, I will give you shelter. And 
if you will be our guest, I will serve you until you leave. Allahu Akbar. Idfa' billati hiya ahsan. Then what happens? This man who had all that hatred, who was insulting Imam Hassan and his father, begins to cry. And he says, I testify by Allah that you are his Khalifa on the earth. You are his representative on the earth. And he becomes a sincere follower of Imam Hassan. This is the effect it can have. Remember the verse? If you do this, the person will become Waliyun Hamim, a sympathetic friend of yours. Maybe not immediately as in this case, but perhaps in the future. These are the lessons we gain as to how we can deal with insults. It's difficult, but gaining inspiration on these nights of Muharram and the lessons that we learn from Nabi Nuh and the prophets as mentioned in the Quran, we can make a start. These are the things that we can do because what's happening is, if we look at this story, let's use it to see what's happening today. Let's replace some of the characters in this story and see how it relates us to today. So Muavia was in the story. Let's replace him with those extremists, those so-called Muslims who are portraying the Islam that we know in a different light, in a very harsh, violent, extreme light. So we replace Muavia with those people. Let's also replace the propaganda of Muavia with what people see on the media, the images that they see about Islam, the reports that some parts of the media write about Islam. So Muavia's propaganda is replaced with that. Let's now replace that Shami person with your everyday, your average Joe who doesn't know the reality of Islam. He doesn't know the in-depth teachings of the Ahlul Bayt He just knows what he's heard from the propaganda, from the reports, from the images he sees. Just like that person who was brainwashed by Muawiyah. Now, let's replace Imam Hassan al-Mushtaba with the true face of Islam. That's what he represents the true teachings of the Ahlul Bayt This is where we come in. We must also follow in the steps, in the footsteps of these great leaders of ours. Let's put ourselves in that position when we come across people who don't know about Islam, not the in-depth teachings of the Ahlul Bayt at least. All they are hearing and seeing are those extreme reports and images of people who have hijacked the agenda of Islam. Let's redefine Islam as we know it to be. As these great leaders of ours have taught us. Let's regain the agenda and show people that just like Imam Hassan Mushtaba showed that person this is what the Ahlul Bayt is. We show people through our character and our words what true Islam is inshaAllah. Sallu ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. So as a summary before we mention a few words of Masaib, today we looked at another prophet as mentioned in the Quran. We saw how Nabi Nuh was insulted a lot. But just like the Holy Prophet as well was insulted, we saw also an example of Nabi Nuh's ma'rifa when he says Bismillah and the ark will sail and anchor in the name of Allah. We should also bear this in mind and use this beautiful phrase with meaning, with deep conviction in Allah's will for everything to happen and for everything to be blessed by doing it in the name of Allah. Then we saw what the Quran tells us. It takes us through steps and stages of how to deal with insults, not responding with ignorance, exercising Hajj Jamil and keeping away in a graceful manner agreeing to disagree and then repelling evil with goodness. We saw how Nabi Nuh did it and how Imam Hassan al-Mushtaba did it. Inshallah, we can follow in their footsteps. Salu ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. Sallallahu alayka ya 
أبا عبد الله صلى الله عليك يا ابن رسول الله صلى الله عليك وعلى الأرواح التي حلت بفنائك عليك مني سلام الله أبدا ما بقيت وبقي الليل والنهار ولا جعله الله آخر العهد مني لزيارتكم All together please السلام على الحسين وعلى علي بن الحسين وعلى أولاد الحسين وعلى أصحاب الحسين History recalls that on the second of Muharram, the caravan of Imam Hussein reached the land of Karbala. Karbala, this word just conveys a sense of grief when the lovers of the Ahlul Bayt hear it. Karbala, the lovers of the Ahlul Bayt, they feel sorrow and grief as soon as they enter such a place. It is reported that Imam Ali alayhi salam once went to Karbala and then somebody told him the name of that place. He said, Naam Zatu Karbin Wabala. Yes, this is a place of affliction and tribulation. And then he tells everyone there what will happen in the future. He says, There shall be the place where they will alight. There is the halting place of their camels, and there their blood shall be spilled. In fact, it's reported that in, on the second of Muharram, Imam Hussein, when he enters Karbala, he, uh, Hur ibn Riyadh, uh, ibn Riyadh, Yazid, ibn Yazid al Riyahi, he comes and stops Imam Hussein from going further forward. He, all his people, they gather in front of their horses and their camels. And so Imam Hussein, he asks this question, that what is the name of this place? Zuhair ibn al -Qain, he responds by saying, O oh, Abu Abdullah, don't ask anything until Allah gives us ease. He says, this place is called At-Taf. Imam Hussein asks Zuhair ibn al -Qain, is it known by any other name? Zuhair responds by saying, it is also called Karbala. At that point, Imam Hussein echoes the words of his father. He says, Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min al karbi wa bala. Oh Allah, I seek refuge in you from the affliction and the tribulation. And then he says similar words to what his father says. He says, there is the place where we shall alight. There is the place where our blood shall be spilled. Here is the place of our graves. But Mu'minid, how true were his words. For indeed that was the place where his blood was spilled. It was the same place. Place that Lady Zainab al Kubra found the body of her brother lying on the sands of Karbala on the day of Ashura. It was the same place that she saw her brother's body, which is separated from his head. It's the same place that on the 11th of Muharram she goes past and she sees it in such a desecrated manner. For on the 11th of Muharram, uh, Umar ibn Sa'd, he performs, he gathers all the dead of his army. He performs the funeral prayers for them and then he instructs for them to be buried. But Mu'minin, what about the bodies of the shuhada? They were lying without any shrouds, without being given ghusl, without being buried, exposed to the sun and to the winds. But now on the 11th of Muharram, Umar ibn Sa'd decides to leave for Kufa with the women and the children the women and the children they are bound in chains they are hit they are sworn at 
Some of them are placed on camels without any saddles. Now the women, they say, by Allah, take us to the place where Hussein was killed. So now they are taken past the Qatalgah, the place where Imam Hussein was martyred. As they go past that place, they cry out in grief. They slap their faces in anguish. The reporter says, I will never forget the words of Lady Zainab. The daughter of Ali, how she mourned her brother. She did so with such a sorrowful voice that even both friends and foes alike began to weep. Let's listen to the words of Lady Zainab, how she describes what she saw. She says, Ya Muhammad, Sallallahu Alaihi Malaika Sama. Oh Muhammad, may the angels of the heavens send their salutations on you. Then she describes in her words what she is seeing. It's a graphic description of what they have done to Abu Abdullah. This is Hussein lying bare-bodied. He's covered in blood. And his limbs have been severed. Then she explains what's happening to her and the other women and the children. And your daughters have been taken captive. Finally, Lady Zainab only has one prayer now. She just wants to pray to Allah that he accepts this sacrifice. So she places her hands under the body of her brother. She lifts it and she says, Illahi taqabbal minna hadha al-qurban. Oh my Lord, accept from us this sacrifice. Allah la'natullah al-qawmi zalimeen. وسيعلم الذين ظلموا أي منقلب ينقلبون Oh Allah, we ask you by the right of Imam Hussein to protect and hasten the appearance of our Imam Oh Allah, bless this center and all those who frequent it Oh Allah, enable us to learn from the lessons of the prophets mentioned in the Quran Oh Allah, enable us to deal with insults in an effective manner O oh Allah, forgive us and our forefathers for our sins. And O oh Allah, bring relief to all those who are facing difficulty around the world. Matameh Hussein. Bula kar sab ko hazrat ne kaha e kar bala walo Bula kar sab ko hazrat ne kaha e kar bala walo Hame dar kar اور اسی کے اے کر بلا والو بلا کر سب کو حضرت نے کہا اے کر بلا والو بلا کر سب کو حضرت نے کہا اے کر بلا والو ارادہ ہے اسی جنگل میں اپنا گھر بنائیں گے نہیں تاہا شرع اب تم سے جدہ اے کر بلا والو بلا کر سب کو حضرت نے کہا اے کر بلا والو بلا کر سب کو حضرت نے کہا اے کر بلا والو خدا را مرنے والوں کو نہ روکو راہ رہنے دو مجھے لائی یہاں میری قضاء کر بلا والوں 
बुला कर सब हजरत ने कहा कर बलावालो बुला कर सब को हजरत ने कहा कर बलावालो हम उठ जाए गे जब या से तो फिर सब चैन उठाएंगे बनेगी खाक ये खाके शफाए कर बला वालो बुला कर सब को हजरत ने कहा कर बला वालो बुला कर सब को हजरत ने कहा कर बला वालो मैं चुप जाऊंगा गर एक मुठी खाक डालोगे यू ही बन जाएगा मर कद मेरा ए कर बला वालो बुला कर सब को हजरत ने कहा कर बला वालो बुला कर सजरत ने कहा कर बला वालो मुहिब आए जो बाद मर गे कस की जियारत को बता देना उन्हें मेरा पता ए कर पला वालो बुला कर सब को हजरत ने कहा कर बला वालो बुला कर स को हजरत ने कहा कर बला वालो हमारी कब्र पर आना तो दो आंसू बहा जाना मिले फुर्सत तो पर नाफा ते हा कर बला वालो बुला कर सब को हजरत ने कहा कर बला वालो बुला कर सब को हजरत ने कहा कर मौलाना <laughs> اللهم كن لوليك حجة ابن الحسن صلواتك عليه ولا باي في هذه الساعة وفي كل ساعة وليا وحافظا 
وقائدان وناصرا ودليلا وعينا حتى تسكنه أرزك توأ وتمطئه فيها طويلا برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين